my first ever phone when I was 10 years old and it was a Motorola Timeport 260. This tiny little silver thing with an antenna. And as I became a teenager, I really wanted the Motorola Razr V3, of course in pink, but I wasn't allowed to have it. So best believe that I'm really excited to have the new Motorola Razr 50 in my hands right now. This is the latest in the Motorola Razr series and I'm really excited to talk to you about it and its features. The Motorola Razr 50 is definitely the coolest design phone that I have seen all year. With a vegan leather back that is centered upon opening, a front display that's large and in charge, and some amazing colors. This really pulls on the nostalgic strings in a modern way. The phone is a foldable with a 6.9 inch POLED main display and a 3.6 inch POLED front display that's larger than ever and more functional with the ability to use so many apps without even having to open the phone. The main display does have a 120 hertz refresh rate as well as a peak brightness of 3000 nits, whilst the front display does have up to 90 hertz and 1700 nits of peak brightness. It still works flawlessly and runs so smoothly. Even when playing compatible front display games, it all runs so well and both screens are such a joy to use. The display is also rounded and sort of looks bubble-like. I can't really think of the right way to explain it, but I like the way that the glass curves over the edges because it sort of feels frameless. I just think it looks really nice. It does have a MediaTek Dimensity 7300X processor and eight gigabytes of RAM. And this specific model is a 256 gig option and does have four gigabytes of RAM boost. It has a 4,200 milliamp hour battery and does support turbo power charging for a faster charge. But the best part is it's so light and only weighs roughly 188 grams. It is crazy how light this thing is. The vegan leather on the back of the phone is a stylistic choice and it's one that I really like. It really does make this phone feel like a piece of tech that's a fashion statement, as silly as that sounds, but it's just so cool looking. And I have the spritz orange here, which I would have to say is definitely my favorite color out of the mix, alongside the matching matte aluminum frame and the blacked out camera bumps. The phone looks and feels premium and I think that's why the Razer has always been a hit because it's stylish and in a way futuristic looking. Its whole aesthetic is really cool and it always has been. The crease, well this is definitely the best crease that I've seen in a foldable this year, personally seen. It's barely visible and it's really smooth to the touch in a sense that you don't really feel it, which I think is fantastic. The hinge angles are pretty sturdy too, which is great for getting it into that flex mode position for photos. The speakers though, I think they are a little average and could be a bit more of a full sound. I'll insert a sound test for you now. Hopefully you can sort of hear it on camera. But not only does it look cool, it does have a decent camera system too, with a 50 megapixel main lens and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. And if you care about selfie cameras in flipping phones, there is a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Who's gonna use it? You're just gonna use the rear lenses anyway. But I took a trip to my nonna's recently and I pulled this camera out to give it a test. And I was really surprised at how detailed the images were and how saturated the photos were too. More on that point shortly. But nonna's garden was the perfect spot for color and and the photos really do speak for themselves. What I really like about the Razer though is its ability to showcase the viewfinder on the front of the phone whilst you're taking a photo, which I think is really great for all parties in the shot because you don't have to rely on the person taking the photo to frame it right. The people who are the subjects, they can get themselves into the position they want to get in and then take a photo. It's just so easy. I think that is such an underrated feature of these flip phones that do have the external display as a viewfinder option. It is so handy. One of those small features that you don't think means a lot, but when you use it, it's so helpful. But as always with a flip phone, you do have a flex view mode that does allow you to place the phone into a tripod position and take some photos. And this works really well with gestures so you can activate the shot, the timer will go off and your photo will snap. But the Motorola Razr does have some fun novelty camera settings too, like the photo booth mode where it can literally act as a photo booth and create this cool looking collar for you. I think that's a bit of fun. Overall though, I find that the pro camera shots, they're quite nice, but even the standard photos look just as good. Although back to the point that I wanted to make before, I will say that the photos do look a little over-processed. They are quite high in contrast 
and saturation and I think it's a little bit more than what they should look but I don't actually mind the style I know a lot of people do like having a phone camera that can oversaturate the shot it's not my particular favorite though but I can still appreciate the way the images look because like I said before they speak for themselves but the 120 degree ultra wide lens works really well for those 0.5 shots and that's personally my favorite mode to take photos in the selfie camera it is decent but again Who's really going to use a selfie camera in a flip phone when you can utilize those high megapixels in the rear lens? That's kind of what makes a foldable or a flipping phone a massive selling point. Video though, it's not actually my favorite on this phone as it does seem to warp quite a bit with objects that aren't in focus and with high motion or movement. So this is something that I really would love to see improved on the next version of the Motorola Razr. I just think video could be so much better, but I'll insert some footage now to give you a bit of an example of what I'm talking about. This is Nodna's garden. It's like the happiest place on earth. Moving on from the camera though, software is important when it comes to choosing an Android phone because they all ever so slightly differ in what software they offer. This is running Android version 14, which is completely fine. It does run Google software as well. I think it's very similar to the Pixel with a kind of little splash of Motorola in it, but the MediaTek processor is a mid-range chip. So there could be a little bit more room for improvement there. I'd like to see a more higher end chip, but the overall experience of navigating menus, running apps, watching content, doing what a phone does, it's all pretty great. And I have no complaints with that. We've established that I haven't used a Razer before and the Motorola's that I have used, well, they're back from the 2000s. So it's really refreshing to not only use another flip phone, but one that is optimized so well. The fact that you can do so much on the main display without even having to open the phone and without sacrificing display performance and clarity that is mental to me. It is mental in the best way. I can only hope that other flip phone manufacturers can take this on board and utilize the front screens a bit better and not just limit it to a couple of apps. This can pretty much do everything. I'd say like 95% of everything. <laughs> I'm not going to bore you though with AI talk because we all know it exists and we all know what it does on mobile phones. But the only thing I want to mention that I really do think is great is that this phone does have Google Gemini integrated. I think that is so handy because AI assistance that flow in conversations, that's what these AI assistants should be doing. I don't want an AI assistant to tell me that it's found something it pops up with a link and then I have to go open that link and read the article. I want it to tell me directly what it's found. That's saving time, that's the whole point of AI. But if you do care about generative AI, this does use Google AI to magically erase objects and stylize images to give them a little bit more flair. And it can move objects around too. I actually think it works really well but again, each their own generative AI on phones is not for everybody. But overall, I really think that this is a really awesome phone. And if I did want to stick to a foldable, I would probably go buy one of these for myself because unfortunately this is a loan. I have to send it back, but I'm really happy with it. And I would like to see it with a higher processor and maybe some more RAM, but I do understand that this isn't a productivity focused device. It's more of a fun phone. It's a phone for someone who's social and someone who wants a small and compact device whilst being functional. I'm pretty impressed by this and I really look forward to seeing how Motorola can continue to improve the experience of the Razer phones because if I was looking for an Android, this is definitely one that I would consider. So thank you so much Motorola for allowing me to check out the Motorola Razr 50. I have fulfilled my teenage dream that never happened of having a Razr and it's been so much fun. So thank you. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because I cannot wait to talk more tech with you in the next video.